Hello everyone, this is JM with the Cloud Update. Today we're going to take a look at the steps that you need to go through when you create new fields on quotes and orders or quote line items and order products. And now you can create those under your context definition and get the value maps correctly from quotes into orders. This is going to be part one of a three-part series. Part two will focus on how you can bring values from product into quote line item. And finally, we're going to take a look at how you can take values from, from order items and take those into asset action source. Let's get going with part one of the series. So what we first want to do is, so if I create a new field and our example, we'll focus on creating a new field on quote line item. Creating the field by itself is not enough if we want to be able to leverage that field in either pricing procedures, or if we want to be able to map the field from quote line into order product, or simply if we want to display the field under the transaction line editor and be able to update the value. So a couple things I need to do once I've already created the fields is create the attribute in the node that I want to create it in, right? So in our example, it's going to be sales transaction item. Then we're going to create the tag. And finally, we're going to update the mappings. In our case, now we're going to update quote entities mapping and order entities mapping. And finally, we're going to test and see the results of this. So let's jump into Salesforce. I've got my quote. My custom field isn't created yet, right? So we're going to take this from the top. The first thing we do want to do is create that field, right? So you could create it through the interface, through whatever means you want, right? If you've got inspector, you can do that. For now, I'm simply going to use Jetstream because that's slightly easier. And I've got it already open there. As I said, we do want the same field created on quote line item and order product. I'm also going to create it under product so um, that we're ready for phase two of this. Then we're going to decide what profiles we want this assigned to, right? So select as many profiles and permission sets as is required for your use case. Then we're going to continue and create our field. Simply going to create one field for our example. I create a pick list called power requirement our requirement is going to have a couple different options we're not going to use a global pick list and we'll do 110 220 or 40 so we're going to have simple tree options within our pick list once this is done you can get the field created so i'm going to add it to my different page layouts i'm going to get the field created and then we're going to get back into salesforce and see what that looks like at this point all right so the fields are created now head back into salesforce we're going to modify our layout to add that new field on our quote line item i'm going to go into the edit page and we'll modify our line editor to display that new field that we just created power requirements i'm going to select my editor and we're going to modify the fields so i will look for our requirement within my list there we go power requirement i'm going to add it at the end of our list there it is it's finally highlighted got power requirement i'm going to save my lightning record page make make sure it's active if it's a new one and we're going to add back into our quote so at this point, all I've done, right, is create the field, the standard Salesforce way, way right? So I've not taken into consideration uh, Revenue Cloud so far. So I can modify the field within the line editor, but let's see what happens if I do it without having it in the context definition, right? So I'm going to save that updated value. And what we expect at this point is that value would stick, but because it's not in our context definition yet, our value gets erased, right? So we lose our value and power requirement and the value gets erased because it doesn't exist in our context definition yet. So what we need to do to get this mapped correctly is add into our context definition and make sure we map this correctly in our active context definition. So add into setup, go to context definition under setup and then under custom definitions, just look for your currently active sales context. For me, it's gonna be the custom sales context. I'm gonna click through on this and now I can add straight into the edit button, top right. So I'm going to click edit. First page, nothing to modify. Second page on the structure, again, nothing to modify here as well. And then when we get to the attributes, first thing I want to do is on the left-hand side, I want to select the nodes, right? I've got multiple nodes that are available depending on what I'm trying to select. I could select different, right? So if I was creating a new field against the quote and the header level, I would do it at the sales transaction. Note, in our example, we want to do it at the sales transaction item because it's a line level field. So I'm going to select that line level field, sales transaction item. A couple attributes already created that are custom. I'm going to create a new one. New one will be for our power requirements. So I'm going to call it power requirement type. We will set to input and output because it can in both input data and output data. And data type, you always want to make sure matches to your field type, right? So You've got a number of field, you don't want to map it into a currency field or the other way around, right? So in our case, it's a pick list. So we do want to select pick list here. And that's all for the attributes. So our attribute is created. We can hit next. On the next page, attribute tags, you do again want to select the node on the left-hand side. 
and you're going to go again to the sales transaction item node that we just modified. We're going to select that sales transaction item, scroll all the way to the bottom or use the filter at the top to search for your new attribute, right? So if I type in power, I'm going to see my new attribute power requirement. What you want to do at this point is add a tag. The tag will again be called power requirement, although you can assign a different name if you wanted to. Once you've selected your name, typed it in, you can hit done. The tag now shows up next to your attribute name and you can hit save. Now at this point, the attribute is created, right? So it can be used in a pricing procedure. For example, if you needed to use that in a pricing procedure, the issue at this point will be that it's not mapped to a quote line field yet or to our order product field. So you still need to map that. So we're gonna have to modify two mappings in our context definition. So we'll add into the map data tab under our active context definition. Under the mappings, you've got multiple. So again, we want to modify two of them. We wanna modify order entities mapping and quote entities mapping. We'll first add into our order entities mapping. So at the on the right hand side of the line, the down arrow, you're gonna click on edit S object mapping. Pop-up comes up <clears throat> with some of the uh, details of the mapping definition, and then you can hit map again, and it's gonna open a new window where you can do the actual mapping. When you get to this page, a lot of mappings, right? Everything that is currently mapped in your context definition shows up. So if you wanna make that slightly easier, at the top on both sides, on the left and on the right, you can search. On, this, on the left-hand side, you search for attributes. So you search for attributes within your context definition. So nodes and attributes. On the right, you search for fields. So you're looking against actual objects and fields in Salesforce. So on the left-hand side, I'm gonna look for power. That should, all right, reduce our list. And if we look at the sales transaction item node, we do see we have one field, one attribute rather under the unmapped section. So if I open this up and expand it, I do see my power requirement attribute shows up here. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna do the same thing and filter to power. And if I look at my quote line item, same thing, we have one field available under the unmapped section. So if I do expand that as well, we see our power requirement field shows up here. So at this point, I wanna map. If I wanna map an attribute to a field, simple thing to do is click on the circle on the left-hand side first, and then click on the circle to the right. If you can map, you're gonna see a line appear. And if I actually click, the line will complete. And now my mapping is done or that new field that I've just created. So at this point, I can simply go ahead, hit save and publish. I understand that the changes will take effect, save and publish again, and there we go. That quote entities mapping is now updated and saved. So I can modify that field, and now the value should stick, right? So if we edit back over to our quote at this point, let's refresh, and now on our quote line, if I go ahead and modify the power requirement, set it to 220, and it's safe because that attribute is now mapped to my field against the quote line, the value that's in there will stick, right? So we see that the value after modifying and saving my quote line is still on there, 220. Now, we know that the field exists on both quote line item and on order product. So if I click on create order at this point, I'm not gonna get the expected result, right? That value will not stick and get over to my order. I do want that value to carry over into our order as well. What I'll do is I'll add back under our context definition. So we've already modified the quote entities mapping. Now we want to go ahead and modify the order entities mapping as well to get that uh, attribute within the context mapped into the order product as well. So again, same process, click the down arrow next to the order entities mapping on the right hand side, edit S object mapping. And finally on the pop-up, you're going to click on map. This is going to open up another tab within your browser where you can do the same operation with mapping the attribute to the field, but now this time around, we're still gonna look for the power requirement attribute on the left-hand side, and it's not gonna be mapped yet because we haven't modified this. So again, under sales transaction item, I do see that I've got one unmapped power requirement attribute. And then on the right-hand side, I wanna look for power requirement, but not on the quote line item this time around. I wanna look for it under order item, and I do see that I have an unmapped field on the right-hand side there. So I'm gonna expand this, and I do see my power requirement field is available, so I'm gonna click Again, left-hand side first, the map, and then on the right-hand side, I select my field, and now the mapping is done at the order product level as well. Same process now, I wanna save and publish my updates to the context mapping. I'm gonna save and publish. There we go. Now, if we go back into our quote, we're gonna hit refresh again, just to make sure everything sticks. Now again, we've got our value set for power requirement at the quote line item level. I'm gonna click on create order. I click on create order. We get the pop-up for advanced order creation. We simply want to create a single order in that scenario. I'm going to hit finish. 
our order will get created. I'm gonna click true on the new order that got created here. We're gonna see our product that got added on, right? Obviously same quantity, same price, that doesn't change. But more importantly, we do see that power requirement came true at 220 volts and that's what we expected to get carried over from our quote line this was how you create new fields in revenue cloud and make sure that the values get mapped over into quote line item and order product if you like the content please take a minute to subscribe as usual if you've got any questions please reach out and i'll remind you that this is part one so in this first video we looked at mapping values and hydrating the context definition with values from quote line items and order products next we're going to take a look at how you can set default values from product and have those carry into quote line items. Usual thanks for watching and have a great day.